be with you. Let us pray. O God, who blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all of his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 20. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up, and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this point he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem, and here he has the authority from the high priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on your way here, has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately, something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. We pray together from the Psalm 30. I will exalt you, Lord, because you have been with me, and I have not been my hand to see my heart.
a reading from Revelation chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne, and the living creatures and the heavens. They numbered myriad of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them sing to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing, honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Only about a hundred yards off. 
When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish on it, and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him for the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wish. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which you glorify God. After this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Early on a Saturday morning, a way time ago, some while ago, I set off to the hardware store to meet Earl. Earl and I were friends and we helped each other around the house with home repairs. Earl needed a hand to fix a bulky garage door. We met at the store for parts and pieces, and a woman came in. She looked frazzled. She came to the register where we were cashing out and said to no one in particular, what kind of stuff do I need to keep the rain out of my living room? A tree branch fell and it stuck right through the, my roof. I knew right then what Earl was going to do. I knew Earl pretty well. We stopped at Earl's house for tools. We had to go through the kitchen to get the chainsaw out of the garage. By sundown, that tree limb was a neatly stacked pile of firewood. We patched the roof and we were warmly thanked. Earl and I felt pretty good about it. For Earl, there was no weighing of options. There was no what's in it for me. It never occurred to Earl not to go and help and he wouldn't accept a dime for the work. Once Earl puts his hands to the plow, things are going to happen. I tell you about Earl because whenever I read of Peter in scripture, I see and hear Earl. You remember the transfiguration on Mount Tabor? Peter's on the mountaintop with Jesus and Elijah and Moses. The sun is going down, it's getting cold. Now, if Earl had been there instead of Peter, he would have said the same thing Peter said. Not words of insightful theology, but let me put up three shelters, one for each of you. There is something about this willingness to work, something about the openness to any possible outcome, fearlessness about looking foolish, about work motivated entirely by genuine kindness and love, work powered by a love that exceeds all other love, in Greek, this kind of love is agape. Agape love is not the same as erotic love or emotional affection. Agape is earnest, deep down, sacrificial love. It's what Jesus has, and it's what Jesus wants for us. It's what Jesus desires from us. Late one night, in a courtyard dark and cold, people are warming themselves around a fire. Peter is there. Inside the building, the authorities are interrogating Jesus. They humiliate and 
torment of Jesus. Peter stands near the fire trying to stay warm, nothing hard, trying hard not to be noticed. Peter shivers against the cold and against the cold stares of the crowd. People look at Peter, voices ask, who is this guy? Where did he come from? Is he one of them? A woman asks Jesus plainly, I'm sorry, a woman asks Peter plainly, you are not one of Jesus' disciples, are you? What does Peter just say? A yes might mean death, a no would be a betrayal. Three times Peter denied Jesus. I don't know the man, never seen him. I'm not with Jesus. And the cock crowed. These three denials are Peter's to own forever. Peter's shame hit him like a boulder from the night sky. Peter failed. Peter failed Jesus. Peter failed even our expectations of him today. It's easy enough for me to say, Peter, you should have said yes. Peter, you should have stood up for Jesus. Peter, you should have said, I know Jesus and I'm a follower. But Peter didn't. Peter didn't and I understand. Easy enough for me to say what Peter should have said and done. Talk is cheap and I'm 2,000 years distant from the event. To Peter's complete credit, he was there in the courtyard, not cowering in the corner of his home or hiding in some cave. Peter was always close to Jesus, as close as he could be, and I love Peter for that. Having thrice denied Jesus, Peter found a corner of the courtyard, turned to the wall, wept, and prayed. Then Peter fell silent. We next hear of Peter at the tomb of Jesus, the empty tomb. Peter's with John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. Peter and John look into the tomb. They see only the cloths that wrapped Jesus' body. The body is not there. Then the disciples return to their homes. That's all we're told. But Peter and John go home and do not speak of the empty tomb. Not another word is reported to pass Peter's lips until today's gospel. When Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, the sons of Zebedee, and a few others are gathered by the Sea of Tiberias. There the usually loquacious Peter utters his first words since the harrowing night in the courtyard. By the lakeside, Peter speaks not majestic words, but words formed in a moment, I am going a fishing. Peter is a fisherman. He returns to something he knows, over which he can exert a measure of control, derive some satisfaction, feed his family. So they went out upon that sea into the night, and they caught nothing. When Peter and his fellow fishers came home, they saw a charcoal fire. There on the beach, the fish on it and bread. The disciples, having caught not a single fish for their night's labor, see the man cooking on the beach, but they did not know it was Jesus. Jesus sends them back out into the sea to cast their nets again, and the catch is tremendous. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Simon Peter, naked as a jaybird, puts on clothes and jumps back in the sea. They bring the catch to shore, 153 fish. Is 153 a magic number? There's a lot of speculation, but no one knows. Jesus has the fire going, and there are fish already cooking on Jesus' fire. Where did the fish come from? But now they know it's Jesus. It's all very mysterious to them. And make of it what you will, curious, sometimes comedic, this is a strange story, and now the tenor changes. Jesus says to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these other disciples love me? Three times in the courtyard, Simon Peter had denied Jesus. Now three times, Jesus asks, Simon Peter, do you love me? And Jesus asks Simon Peter the third time, there is a shift. Jesus uses a different Greek word for love. He uses the word agape. Jesus says, do you love me with a deep, enduring, and sacrificial love? This third time, Peter does not reply with the same word agape. Peter reverts, with some seeming impatience, to a lesser order of love that, that he used in his first responses to Jesus. He uses the word philia. I find Peter's reply very strange. 
though it rings true for me, for the man I understand Peter to be. A man like some other men that I've known. Men not unlike Earl, for whom works speak where words fail. Peter is the rock upon whom the church has been built. Peter has his orders straight from Jesus. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. And Jesus' very last command to Peter and to us, follow me. I confess that I am feeling overwhelmed of late, and I know I am not alone. Climate change, pandemic, war, uncertainty and bitterness. So to steady myself and ready myself in the hope and certainty of God's help to come, I shall feed the lambs and tend the sheep. I shall mend the broken roof where I find it. I will share my bread and my fish with strangers. In these small ways, I will begin to mend the world. In these small ways, I will follow Jesus. Amen. Protect, defend, and heal all who are afflicted by war, 
in Ukraine and across the world, and by violence, especially gun violence. God of life. We commend to your mercy all who have died. As you descended among the dead, bring them with you to new life. And let them and us share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. God of life. Forgive us our sins, Lord Christ. God of life.
God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, and planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending kingdom. Yes. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, with Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. I'd like to be seated for just a couple of announcements. First of all, I hope that you saw in the weekly email the invitation to all those interested in resuming the ministry of Eucharistic minister, uh, a Eucharistic visitor, or those who would like to learn more about those ministries to join us at Coffee Hour next Sunday as we discuss the return of the Common Cup. A reminder that when that happens, no one is obliged to receive from the cup. Christ is fully present in body and blood, in the bread, as in the wine. And also um, that we are strongly discouraging intinction or dipping into the cup for hygiene reasons. But we are bringing back the common cup soon, and those who are uh, ready for relicensing as Eucharistic ministers and would like to assist with that are invited to a meeting at Coffee Hour next Sunday. A couple of volunteer opportunities. Uh, the East 200th Street Stroll, which many of you are familiar with, is the first Saturday in June. Uh, Church of the Epiphany generally has a table. We do an activity or a giveaway. If you are available and have an inspiration for how we can party with our community on that Saturday, then please do let me know. I'd be delighted to have your volunteer uh, ideas and hours for East 200 Street Strong. The following Saturday, June the 11th, is Guns to Gardens National Buyback Day, and you're all aware by now that Epiphany is participating in that as the site of a gun buyback in the morning and of a gun violence vigil to lament and repent and recommit to end gun violence in the afternoon. That vigil will be accompanied by an activity to turn a piece of one of the guns that comes in in the morning into a garden tool using a small portable forge. So if you have any questions about that or you'd like to be involved, again, let me know as soon as possible. Um, we'll be looking for a few volunteers in different areas throughout the day. And do spread the word to those who you know are concerned about guns in their home, maybe they don't have the capacity to secure them, maybe they don't feel as secure with them as they used to, and are looking for a way safely to donate them, let them know about our gun buyback on June the 11th. Finally, because it is part of how we love our neighbours to organise our lives together, don't forget to vote on Tuesday and uh, let me know a coffee hour if you need help finding your polling station, if that has changed, we can look it up together and make sure that you know where to go and vote on Tuesday. Are there other announcements for the good of the community break? I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who donated mulch for the yard, and uh, you'll see the results in the next month or so. <laughs> thank you all. I'd like to stand for our closing hymn number 205.